to be, and I don't give a damn if they suspend me from this league from time and memoriam because those guys with striped shirts aren't in my locker room now with my kids crying their eyes out because we thought we could win the thing and because we should have been able to win the damn thing, and now I gotta go face them. It is a time of year for bitter disappointment and a time for jubilant celebration. It's a time to begin the process of selecting a national collegiate basketball champion. 48 teams all seeking one goal, the championship that Indiana under Bobby Knight won a year ago. This CBS Sports NCAA special is sponsored by Light Beer. Every four under Dean Smith. Let me, Billy, get everybody up to date with the late scores of games that occurred today. North Carolina over Virginia, winning the ACC tournament 47-45. Tough game all the way. Now also, bearing on the tournament, Memphis State downing Louisville 73-62. to So for the first time, Memphis State wins the Metro tournament and automatically they go into the tournament. And so now we have 27. And of course, another game that was seen by many of you folks on CBS, South Carolina over UNLV, 75 to 73. And that might cost UNLV a spot in the NCAA tournament. We've got excitement for you. Take a look at this scene right now at Fresno State. When we get the Bulldog fans are waiting to see where their team will be placed in this tournament. Will they stay out in the West Regional? When will they be matched against someone like Oregon State? That is still ahead of us. Now, of course, there is a selection committee meeting right now in Kansas City. Gary Bender is standing by, and let's go to Gary live right now. Gary? Well, Brent, that committee now has dispersed. They're headed downstairs in just moments, and there's an air of anticipation here. You know, we t visited earlier the halftime of the games we were carrying on CBS. We mentioned that the slogan is a westward drift, and you're really going to see that. You're going to be struck by the fact that this committee has tried as best they can to have a geographical balance, to try after the first few seeds, to spread the teams throughout the country. I will say this, I think there's going to be a lot of surprises out in that west region. Teams that I'm sure at this particular moment will sit and say, hey, wait a minute, we're going out that way? But again, it shows, and it'll show you how tough it's going to be to win those first round games. So we'll be ready to bring those results to you in just a few minutes. Back okay, to you, Brent. You, let me ask you a question right now, because this is the first time that this process has ever been televised, and you've been close to it. Is there a lot of politicking going on, a lot of telephone calls coming into the committee saying we want four teams from the Big Ten and four teams from these other conferences? What happens out there? Absolutely not, Brent. No one is able to get to the committee and talk to them since they've been here in Kansas City. If that was done, it had to happen previously to their coming here. Also, you should, I think, take into consideration this committee is a committee that has a vast knowledge of the game. They're past coaches, they're past players, and I think as best it can possibly be done under the circumstances, it's not political. They're looking for the best games. All right, Gary, thank you so much. And the countdown to a national championship continues on CBS Sports Sunday in just a moment. Right now to Pat O'Brien to check in with that crowd. Pat? Okay, Brent Musburger, we are 150 miles from the ocean, but there is a tide in the San Joaquin Valley. It's called the Red Wave. And this is fans on the Fresno State campus this afternoon waiting to hear who they will play or if they'll get a bye. The leader of the Red Wave is Pat O'Brien. Pat, what is this all about? Well, it's not one person. It's not one organization. People are very proud to be from the greatest agriculture area in the world. They are very competitive, they're very proud of their athletes, they're very proud of their university, and they want to support them. If they can be a sixth man or a thirtieth man, they're going to do what they can do. And, and these people travel all over. They make every out-of-town game a home game. Rod Higgins is a star forward for the Fresno State Bulldogs. What's it like having this kind of fan support? Oh, it's great. You know that uh, you have a sixth man on the road. Uh, these people pay, pay good money to see us. And when, when we see them up in the crowd with all that red, it really turns us on and makes them play a lot harder. Okay, Rod, thank you. We're going to get out of here. We'll be back. Let's go to Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, and Jim Kelly. Thank you, Pat. As we move now from the excitement and jubilation, and deservedly so, out at Fresno State, those fans are rightfully excited to the calm and quiet, almost a reverent-like calm here at the Rupp Arena. 
the arena named after the man whose bust you're looking at now, Adolph Rupp, a legend who led the Wildcats of Kentucky to four NCAA basketball championships, and a man who is now the athletic director here at the Wildcats of Kentucky, Cliff Hagan. He was on a 1951 championship team, an All-American in 1952. Cliff, talk a little bit about the emotion, what it's like to play on a national championship team. Is this a memory that's going to stay with you forever? Certainly, Jim. When I came to the university in the early 50s, Kentucky had just won an NIT and two NCAA championships. So it was sort of expected of us to continue it. And we did live up to that expectation and won the championship in 1951. And then there were some championships after that, and Coach Hall uh, received the legacy from Coach Rupp, and he won his championship in 78. A long legacy, Cliff Hagen, a legacy that is steeped in tradition like yourself, like Adolph Rupp. If you talk about tradition in basketball in Kentucky, it's almost like a thoroughbred racehorse, and the bloodlines are poise and pride. I'm Jim Kelly. Now let's go to Ken Squire at West Virginia. Welcome to wild and wonderful West Virginia. A winter wonder today. Six inches of new snow, but it has not deterred some 5,000 Mountaineer fans from getting together in the Coliseum to honor their team, although they lost last night 79-72 to Pittsburgh. And how about the look of this ball club? It's even gone to their heads this tournament, as you can see from a couple of the players. They call them the Mountaineers. Take a look at some of them ears. What we have here today, what we have, Brent, is not so much a waiting on the NCAA as New Year's Eve in West Virginia. And like Times Square, they're waiting not for the ball to come down, but to find out with whom the ball is going to go up. Let's go to Brent in New York. All right, Kenny. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, that enthusiasm, Billy Packer. You cannot beat it in college basketball. Well, what I like is the fact that everybody in the nation at this point thinks they've got a chance to win it all. That's what makes it thrilling, Bill. <laughs> Indeed they have. And we're going to continue the road to New Orleans and a national championship on CBS right after these messages from your local stations. <laughs> The time has come now for Fresno State and all those other schools to find out where they are going in this tournament. Let's go back to Gary Bender in Kansas City for the announcement. And Louisville. Okay, Brent, three, a nine-man committee has now arrived on the scene. And Dave Gabbett, who's the chairman of this committee, of this committee is getting ready now to hold a press conference. They have the 48 teams on the tourney grid. They are covered as Dave now has come to the podium. Let's listen. Pleased to be here on behalf of our NCAA Basketball Tournament Committee uh, to discuss this year's national championship with you. Uh, we've had, I think, another tremendous season in college basketball. We've had an awful lot of input from our coaches and directors of athletics across the country. And I really stand very confident that the bracket that we're presenting to you and to the teams and to the nation this afternoon is indeed one of the deepest brackets and one of the strongest brackets in recent championship history. Uh, we have an awful lot of good teams that made our decisions, I think, very difficult. But uh, we're confident that we had enough input from all the right sources that those decisions were made as objectively and as fairly as our committee could make them. Uh, I can assure you uh, that the committee made up of six former basketball coaches and people who have been intimately involved in the game understand clearly how deeply important it is to the coaches and to the players and how disappointing it can be when their team is not uh, entered into the national championship. Uh, we really do believe that we've got a great field, very deep uh, in its talent. I think that you're going to find the word upset no longer applies in the NCAA tournament. I think that uh, as we grappled with the seedings and with trying to balance the brackets across the country from east to west, it became evident to us that uh, there were very close calls and not much to choose from when we stopped to consider the top 32 teams in the country. Uh, I would not get hung up on individual seeds as much because we didn't. We tried to look at a bracket in total. And, and tried to make it as competitive and as fair uh, as we could for any team to battle its way through any region to get to New Orleans for the Final Four, which is every player and every coach's dream. Obviously, as in other years, we have had to move some teams from their natural geographic region. And as long as the population centers in the country, I think, remain in the East and the Mideast districts, that will forever be so. Uh, the 48 teams in the bracket uh, 18 are naturally in the East, 13 are naturally in the Mideast, only 10 naturally in the Midwest, and only 7 naturally in the West. 
and obviously they're not all going to fall out to be at the same levels in those areas. So we have had to move because we had 31 of the 48 teams sequestered naturally into the eastern half of the country where there are more people and more schools and more conferences, we've had to move some teams west. We've done this uh, to try to create balance. We've done it in the best interest of the national championship. We understand that it's a, a difficult thing for fans of these, of these schools that have followed their schools all year. But there just simply aren't enough spots numerically in the east to keep everybody home near their home base in the Mideast and the eastern region. I think that the most important thing now is that this championship is for the players and regardless of what the bracket is starting on thursday i think we're going to we're going to get at what really counts throw the ball up on the court and play and i believe we'll have one of the most exciting national championships that we've viewed in recent years i'd like to uh, publicly thank the members of the committee i think time again uh, would limit my introducing them individually i'd like to thank the writers here today and thank cbs sports for their coverage of the process uh, of setting the national championship and with that I'll stop and be happy to entertain any questions uh, from anyone here. Dave Gavitt and now we'll start to show you the 48 teams that are in this tourney field. I think we should start by saying the top four teams, the top four seeds in the country. I think one of them will be a surprise. North Carolina is the top seed. DePaul, Virginia and Georgetown was seated also in that top four. Okay, let's go to the board. This is going to be the Eastern Regional. And the top seed out there, to no one's surprise, the team that won the ACC tourney today, North Carolina. Now, they will play the winner of the eighth and ninth seed, Ohio State and James Madison. The number four seed, Alabama. And they will be playing the winner of St. John's and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has won 14 games in a row. Now, looking at those games out in the east as far as location is concerned charlotte is where the ohio state james madison game will be played uniondale will be pennsylvania and st joseph's or st john's i should say and northeastern also against st joseph's that will be in uniondale and the winner of the st joseph's northeastern game will play the third seed in the east villanova and then the second seed in the east is memphis state who won today the metro conference tournament they will be playing the winner of the seventh and tenth seed wake forest and old dominion switching now to the midwest the top seed the depaul blue devils who have a 21 game winning streak they will play the winner of boston college and san francisco you can hear the reaction of depaul depaul now of course has lost the first round the last two years and now they'll have an opportunity to redeem themselves there the fourth seed in this region is arkansas and arkansas will play the winner of kansas state and northern illinois moving on tulsa seeded third team that won the missouri valley conference the missouri valley conference tournament i should say they will play the winner of the houston alcorn state game and then finally the second seed in the midwest the missouri tigers who won their third straight big eight championship they will play the winner of marquette and evansville Moving on now to the Mideast. The Virginia team, who lost today to North Carolina by two, is seated first in the Mideast. And they will play the winner of Southwest Louisiana and Tennessee. Alabama Birmingham, from the Sun Belt Conference, seated fourth in the Mideast. They will play the winner of Indiana, the defending NCAA champions. And Brandon asked if they'd be back, and they will, and Robert Morris. Louisville, who lost today to Memphis State, but still you can see the committee holds them in high esteem as they are seated third in the Mideast. They'll play the winner of Kentucky, who was beaten by Alabama in that Southeast Conference Tournament Final and Middle Tennessee. Minnesota, who won the Big Ten Championship, is seated second in the Mideast, and they will play the winner of North Carolina State and Tennessee Chattanooga's 126 games this year. Finally, moving to the Western region, now, this is where the surprises really take place. Georgetown is seated number one in the West. So that's a long trek across the country for them. And they will be playing the winner of Wyoming and USC. That game will be played in Logan. Fresno State, the fourth seed in the West. Fresno State will be playing, as you can see, the excitement out there. They wanted to know if they're going to stay West. And in fact, they will be staying West. 
And Fresno State, by the way, will be playing in Logan. They will be in the Logan Regional or the Logan site. And Fresno State, another surprise, West Virginia. Coming from the east, they will be out west. And the winner of the MEAC, as you hear, a Mountaineer reaction in Morgantown, West Virginia. West Virginia will be playing the winner now of the MEAC tournament. And that right now is between Howard and North Carolina A&T. That's really the only thing that hasn't been decided yet as far as tournaments are concerned. The number three seed, the Idaho Vandals, who have won all but two games this year. And they'll be playing the winner of Iowa, who slumped at the end, losing their last three, and Northeast Louisiana. And Oregon State is the second seed in the Western Regional. And this, of course, will be coming out of Pullman, Washington. Oregon State will be playing the winner of Pepperdine who had an outstanding year this year, winning the WCAC, and Pittsburgh, who upset West Virginia last night. So as we said earlier, Brent and Billy, at the top of the show, the real surprises would be the westward drift, the teams that had to go to the west. And you can very quickly see Georgetown. I don't think anybody expected that. West Virginia moving out there. But again, Dave Gabbett pointed out there were only seven teams in the west that qualified, Well, there was a lot of them qualifying in the east and so it kind of gives you an idea of where we are as far as the 48 teams are concerned for 1982 let's go back now to brent all right gary thank you so much and billy it'll take a while now for us to go over but off the top we're only one game away from kentucky finally having to meet louisville that's right you can't legislate in this tournament you've got to play and you've got to win to move on and they couldn't they could face each other first time are you surprised about virginia we had speculated they'd go all the way into the western regional i really did i thought that they would go out west but instead georgetown was the club and i guess that they felt that the way georgetown's been coming on lately you can't uh, take away a number one seed for them. all right billy a lot of storylines still to come plus reaction from schools such as fresno state that's ahead of us as CBS Sports Sunday continues the countdown to a title in a moment. Back to Pat O'Brien at Fresno State, Pat. Okay, thank you, Brent. We're at Fresno State campus. We're sitting here with Coach Boyd Grant. What do you think? You heard the news. you got a lot of Eastern teams coming out here. Well, we're not sure about the Mideast yet. West Virginia is one of them. Certainly, we're excited. We feel like that going into Logan, we've been there before. And... Uh, we're glad it's a PCAA site, a place that will support us, Pat. And uh, I think we'll be ready to play a good game. You like having a bye, don't you? You like that a lot. Yes, I really like the bye because now you only have to win three to get to the final four instead of four. Okay, Coach Boyd Grant, they call the stadium here Grant's Two. <laughs> Pat O'Brien in Fresno, back to you, Brent. All right, Pat, thank you so much. Billy Packer, I know a lot of coaches that do not want that bye. They want to play all the way. Well, I think that Boyd made a good point, though. You always take a chance of getting beat if you've got to play one more game. So he knows he's beaten by. You know, you, you win that game against by. So right. He likes that. <laughs> Kentucky, of course, has lost the SEC tournament. A stunning upset. But Coach Joe B. Hall is going anyway. And let's go back now down to Jim Kelly and Lexington and the coach. Jim? Thank you, Brent. With me is Joe B. Hall, the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats for the last 10 years. The 78 championship trophy is behind us. You won number one. Is going after number two tougher, Coach? I'm not really sure. We're going to have to wait and see, but uh, certainly any of them are tough, Jim. Joe, last night, an upset to Alabama in the SEC tournament. Getting your kids back up emotionally now, how tough will that be coming off a tough loss like that, a two-point loss? Well, that's certainly a concern, and it's been our experience in the past that uh, our kids have responded well. They've come back, rededicated themselves, worked a little harder, and, uh, and a loss has seemed to pick us up, so I hope that's true in this case. Okay, Joe, thank you. We could probably jump it up right here, Brent. We've got Joe B. Hall. Ten years, tournament tested tough. Stan Simpson, head coach at Middle Tennessee State. A big upset last night in winning the Ohio Valley uh, Conference against Western Kentucky. You go head-to-head -head with Joe Hall. How do you feel about that? Well, Jim, I feel a lot like the lonely boy in high school. Uh, the last minute, he was invited to the senior prom by the most beautiful girl in the senior class. I'm thankful for the opportunity, but I just hope I'll be able to dance with her. Uh, <laughs> my postman's six foot six, Chris Harris, and they didn't tell me that she had a boyfriend that was 6'11 and Melvin Turpin. And I guess we'll have to put the nose to naval defense on Turpin, but uh, we're thankful for the opportunity to play Kentucky. There you go. You've been in the wagon before. This is the first time he's had a chance, though, to handle the reins. Brent, if you've got a basketball, throw me one. We can jump it up right here. <laughs> All right, Jim. Thank you so much. By the way, what does Coach Hall think about being just one win away from a showdown against Louisville? 
<laughs> we'll get back. I guess that's what he thinks, right? I don't blame you him. You can't get that question answered except by Phyllis George. I, you know, I have to ask you, Billy, you should explain to folks, because I've alluded to it a couple of times, what really is the controversy? Why won't Kentucky and Louisville meet during the regular season, schedule each other? Well, I, I just don't think University of Kentucky feels that's in the best interest of their program. The Louisville fans have always wanted that opportunity, and, and I always felt that it would finally come in NCAA showdown history. But uh, look out, anybody that can beat Western Kentucky at Western Kentucky in a tournament time, He's got a chance for an upset. So true. Now, we have folks who did not make the tournament today. Jerry Tarkanian, UNLV, was beaten. Let's go to Vern Lundquist, who is with the fine coach now. Vern? Okay, Brent, you've seen some of the elation around the country, and here's the other side of the coin. Jerry, I know you're disappointed about not getting in. The key is, do you think the loss today kept you from the tournament? Well, you know, we've been on a roller coaster most of the year. We were playing real well at the end of the year. We'd won 11 out of our last 13, and we beat some real good teams, but we lost to some teams that weren't real good, and I think that this loss today probably, uh, I'm sure it didn't help us any, and uh, so, you know, we just, we just want to wish everybody else good luck. Okay, Jerry, thank you, and congratulations on uh, on almost a fine year, and here's a story that sums it up. This is the end of the game as South Carolina upset Nevada, Las Vegas, 75-73 today. Brent? All right, Vern, thank you so much. More elation, of course, at DePaul. The Blue Demons are in it, and they are one of the top seeds. Let's go to Johnny Morris on their campus. Johnny? Thank you, Brent. Yes, there are fans here at DePaul University also. They're happy to find out that DePaul has gone to the Midwest Regional, and they are extremely happy. However, we have Coach Ray Meyer. I'm not so sure uh, uh, it's going to be a tough regional. Uh, no question about it, Johnny. We're in a very tough regional, and uh, there's some good ball clubs in there. But we still have to get by the first game, which we haven't done in the past two years. But I think our team is ready this year, and I think we'll win. You talk about that jinx. Both the last two years, you were rated number one, lost the first game. At least this year, you're not going to be rated number one. You're going to be going number two going in. Well, we're number two this year. That means we're going to win the first game. Okay, Ray. Best of luck. And that's it from DePaul University. Back to Brent. All right, Johnny. Thank you so much. Billy, one of the grand old men of the college game, Ray Meyer. And he's a real fighter, and uh, I heard him say the other day he did not want to be number one going in. All right. The countdown to a national championship continues on CBS in just a moment. <laughs> moving and getting the top seed in the West. That was a tough call by, uh, I think, our committee, and the feeling really was uh, that it was a question of balance. Again, uh, not to overwork that westward drift thing you've been talking about, but Georgetown, in their opinion, coupled with Iowa State as a one-two punch in the West, gave that region the same kind of balance that those two ACC teams almost by themselves gave the East and the Mideast. And, of course, Oregon State with the second seed in that region. Well, Oregon State's going to be no bargain for anybody to play, that's sure. Well, you have some great matchups coming. You and I were just talking about them. Some of the things that are actually happening. Let's go back now to Brent. All right, Gary, and let's run through those matchups. In the East, Ohio State opens against James Madison. St. John's in Pennsylvania, St. Joe's in Northeastern, Wake Forest and Old Dominion and Fort B.S. Sports on this Sunday afternoon. Have a nice week, everybody. <laughs> CBS Sports begins its complete coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament with first round action from Logan, Utah. This, this CBS Sports, Sports NCAA special. This CBS Sports NCAA special has been sponsored by Ice Blue Aqua Velva. Yes, there's something about an Aqua Velva man. And by Avis. Avis is trying hard to take the worries out of renting cars. This NCAA special has been a presentation of CBS Sports.